So step number one for your fast, maximizing your results, and you know what? Making your fast easier. So look, the fast, February 24th through the 28th, five days. Look, I'm gonna say this because I have to say this. Uh, if you have health challenges on medications, check with your doctor before you do any type of fasting. But remember, we don't have to just water fast. Many of you are new. Many of you are absolutely pros at this and have fasted many times. And by the way, with each fast, you get more and more efficient and more and more healthy. So remember, it's not just about one fast, it's about many fasts. And many of you have joined us uh, on the past three fasts. And by the way, this is our fourth one. That's pretty amazing. Uh, but with each fast, you do. You get more and more autophagy, which we're gonna talk about in more stem cell production, and you get better results with each fast. So uh, if this is your first one, welcome. Uh, I'll tell you, we have quite the group. And many of you maybe just found my fan page uh, where all the videos will be, but you need to join Fasting for a Purpose as well because there we have the interaction and it's much easier fasting with a group, isn't it guys? Someone just sent me an amazing testimony uh, yesterday thanking my wife and I for the change in her life. And I believe she was actually on the first one and joined us on all the fast. And everything that I'm gonna teach you up until February 24th, she's applying still. And by the way, most of you should apply as well. Today's uh, teaching, if you want, week number one, you're going to master how to become fat adapted. So this is not that hard, honestly. But here, let me start here though. I'm going to be through these weeks of teaching talking about the benefits of fasting, obviously. And I, I just mentioned a word called autophagy. That means when we're in a fasting state, um, and by the way, I, I said I didn't finish the point there that you don't just have to water fast. We're gonna talk about different types of fasting like the fasting mimicking diet that many of you love. Um, and uh, also there's bone broth fasting, different things like that. But look, um, the bottom line is, is that regardless of which fast you do, you experience something called autophagy, which simply means the body's so smart, it will get energy and amino acids and peptides to repair its cells and, uh, and utilize it for energy, but it will eat the bad cells and leave your good cells alone. So that's amazing because what happens is after it eats the bad cells, it raises up stem cells to replace them. And one of the things that we had noticed years ago is that during fast, white blood cells drop. And many people thought it maybe was a bad thing. But what we found out uh, through studies, more modern day studies, one of which was done by a guy named Walter Longo, who is the creator of the fasting mimicking diet, which you're going to learn about. But the bottom line is, is you get rid of these bad cells and you replace them with stem cells. So during this, these fasts, the white blood cells drop. And what happens is, is we noted that the immune system after fast actually gets better and it down regulates a lot of autoimmune and hyperimmunity. So food sensitivities, those types of things. Clinically, we noted this for years, but now Longo and his team noted what was happening was the autophagy was getting rid of the old white blood cells, the overactive ones that are driving the autoimmune, the ones that are driving the hypersensitivities, the allergies, etc., cetera, in replacing them with new, more naive white blood cells that don't overreact. And therefore, that's one of the reasons that explain why we got such amazing results with conditions like autoimmune. Look, more and more studies are coming out um, with multiple hormone conditions, thyroid conditions, diabetes. I mean, all of these studies uh, are being done. As a matter of fact, Longo's group just received $44 million from the NIH uh, to do more of these studies, not just on animals, but in humans. So very exciting time right now. I think most of you watching this understand the benefits of fasting. Okay, why do we want to become fat adapted before we fast? And purposely, we're doing this at least a month ahead of time, a month and a week, because we want time to get into this fat adapted state. So bottom line is this, most Americans, if they go without eating, their body will either give you a craving because it's wanting sugar, it's wanting carbohydrates for energy, um, or it will basically take your muscle 
and make sugar from it to feed the cells because your cells can only use two things for energy, either sugar or fat. And unfortunately, most people are stuck as sugar burners and we need to train our cells to become fat adapted. That's what we're going to start this week, this fat adaptation process known as ketosis. So this has been the rage. Now, later on, I will tell you why I don't think it's a great idea staying in ketosis, but it sure is a good idea moving in and out of it, especially getting in this state before you fast. Because now, in a fasting state, when we stop eating, guess what our cells immediately start to feed from? Yes, your stored fat, <laughs> and that's a really good thing. But otherwise, it may take you three, four days to get to that point during the fast. When you go into the fast fat adapted, man, your cells just start feasting on your fat right away. That's a great thing. And what we know is it increases your autophagy. So now you start getting more of this autophagy sooner. That's a really good thing. So therefore, you're eating way more bad cells and therefore, and here's the best part, you create far greater stem cells even earlier on in the fast. So more results, and obviously if you're using your fat for energy during the fast, it makes the fast way easier, man. <laughs> That's probably the best idea. So I can go a day without food, and my, my cells immediately switch over to using my fat as energy. And that doesn't happen to most people because they want the carbohydrates, it's a craving. And it's not your fault. Your cells are just trained to want sugar. And if it doesn't get the sugar because it makes you desire it, need it, guess what? It'll start breaking your muscle down. So if we go into the fast, fat adapted, magic happens from day one. The cravings aren't there. You don't you know, have the major uh, energy lag. I get no energy lag during uh, a fast. Many of you now are saying, me either now. It's very easy for me to fast. So the idea is we want to be fat burners at the cellular level. So we're going to force our uh, cells to start using fat this week. Most of you, it's going to take two to three weeks to get into this fat adapted state. So one thing, you're gonna need some tools. First of all, freeketoroadmap.com, that will help you. We're gonna put you in ketosis. That'll give you some of my favorite tips. Uh, second of all, you're going to need to get a meter to measure your ketones. You're going to see me using this. I don't have time tonight, but next week, I'm gonna kind of bring it out and actually show you a little better. But get ketomojo.com. You can get one of these meters. It's uh, about $65 and the strips are about a dollar a strip. Get glucose and ketone strips. So therefore, we know what both are doing and you'll find out why later. Because we're gonna be able to see if you're in this max autophagy state. But you're going to need the ketone strips to see if you're in ketosis. How do you know if you're in ketosis? So. You're going to test your, with the little thing. It's a finger prick, it doesn't hurt. The thing is so fast, so don't worry. But when you get 0.5 or over in a morning ketone test, you are now fat adapted and you're in ketosis. Some people, that may happen in a week. Some people, two weeks, three weeks, some people, four weeks, and some people, it may not happen at all, but we'll talk if those questions start coming in because there's reasons for that. So we want to get into this keto state. We know we're in that state when we're above 0.5 ketones in our blood. beta hydroxybutyrate is the ketone we're actually measuring. Above 0.5 in the morning is the best time before you do anything, before you exercise, before you drink coffee, before you do anything, measure it so we get a pure measurement first thing in the morning. That's your only thing you have to know right now. How to get into this ketotic state, uh, state decrease your carbs to less than 50. Listen. Most people today think that ketosis, you get into ketosis by eating fat. No, that can help you, but you get into ketosis by lowering your carbs below 50. On average, some of you, you may need to go lower. So if you're not getting in after a few weeks, you might have to lower your carbs down to 30 or 20. And by the way, that is something that I call net carbs. Net carbs means you're allowed to look at the carbs on the label and you subtract the fiber, and now you have the net carbs. So therefore, let me just give you one example. Let's say you're looking at your cup of blueberries that contains, I'm just gonna make up a number, 20 grams of carbs. Oh my gosh, 20 grams of carbs for this cup of blueberries, but you realize that 
10 of the 20 are fiber. So you're allowed to subtract the fiber and now you're left with 10 net carbs. So now you have 40 net carbs to, to go throughout the day. So that's your daily input. That's what's gonna put you in ketosis because we're decreasing the amount of carbohydrates, forcing your cells to uh, start burning your own fat is energy. All right, so we, we don't, this isn't a high protein diet. We want moderate to low protein. So what does that mean? So if you take your body weight, your lean body weight, so high school body weight for some of you, um, to cut it in half, and that's about your protein. So if you're 150 pounds, you know, maybe somewhere between 75 and 80 is a reasonable amount for the day because we don't want you eating all this protein. You potentially uh, could cheat it into some sugar and we don't want that. But there's other reasons not to go high protein, but I don't want to get into that in this video. So really two simple rules here. We want to get our carbs less than 50 and we want uh, moderate to low protein. Pretty easy, but let me give you a couple tips. This is my 2222 rule. This means that when you start dumping glycogen, that's stored sugar in your muscles and liver, you're going to lose electrolytes. And that could be a reason you feel really tired. That could be a reason that, yeah, and you, some of you are gonna feel tired anyway because your glucose is gone and you're not shifted over to your fat yet. So that could happen anyway. But if you do at least two teaspoons of sea salt a day, it helps. Warm water, slug it down, you could do it throughout the day, plus what you're uh, putting on your food, that's fine. Um, and you can do, I always say some people two to four teaspoons, some people do better with more, so try it. Two tablespoons of coconut oil or MCT oil. Those are uh, medium chain triglycerides, they help you burn your fat as energy. It can help you and it can give you some quick energy. So that's good. And then two tablespoons of ghee, which is a short chain fatty acid, it's good for your gut, but it also keeps you from being really hungry too, because you're gonna want those carbs. But it also gives you some really healthy fats, like saturated fat and cholesterol. I know you might not think those are healthy, but they are. And I don't have time to tell you why, but trust me when I tell you they are. And then two tablespoons of either olive oil or avocado oil. And I recommend cooking hot stuff with avocado oil in pans, definitely a better oil. Olive oil, um, you can heat it, but not above 350, another story. But some good olive oil brings in some other good fats. So this just gives you a variety of fat, which makes it easier. Now listen, some of you may get the keto flu. That means you don't feel well, simply put. And a lot of that is just because your glucose is lower and you're gonna have to wait till you uh, transition or what we say, fat adapt. So give it time. Okay, uh, time, to, uh, time to adapt is gonna be critical there. Also, this, uh, the sea salt really helps that. All right, now look, some of you are gonna say, my brain's not working. Here's why, because your brain can only use glucose for energy. It can't use fat like the rest of your body. So you might say, I'm adapted, my numbers are getting better, I'm above 0.5, why don't I feel well yet? Aren't I burning my fat? Well, your brain's not using uh, the fat because it can't, and you've starved it of glucose and sugar, it needs ketones, right? I know you're making them maybe, but yet it's not adapted to using them yet. Give it time. So keto adaptation could take a little longer for some of you. But again, stay tuned every week because I'm gonna keep giving you tips on how to make this, uh, make this happen. The first week's the hardest. So get past the keto flu for sure. All right, so those are the tips. This is your first week. And again, not new news for some of you. Some of you are pros, but you need to get your friends and family on board. This video will be here to watch and say, look, you're going to do this fast, but we're going to maximize our results and we're gonna make it easier. So we're gonna follow Pampa once a week and start this process because th this is in a plan. There's a sequence here that makes sense. Next week, all I want you to do right now to think of next week is count how many meals a day you're eating. Hold on, not just meals because you all tell me three or whatever it is. I want you to count every time you put drink besides water, so your kombucha. I don't care if it's healthy or not, your coffee or tea, whatever it is, count how many things you put in your mouth because those are technically meals, the handful of nuts, the salad, whatever it is, okay? Count and record that. I consciously want you to pay attention and we'll talk more about that next week, okay? So week one, fat adaptation, simple. Get your meter, all right? Go get that, let me just put it back up there one more time. 
free keto roadmap will help you. Get ketomojo.com, get the meter, and next week I'll kind of show you more how to use it. It's pretty self-explanatory, but I'll show you that anyway uh, in review. So that's it, week one done. Listen, share this and like it so we get out there. We have 18,000 people on this fasting page. So, and remember, check with your doctor before you do any fast, especially if you have health conditions or on medications, anything like that. And again, if you're afraid to water fast, we have options. You don't have to do that. Many of you are pros at water fasting, thumbs up, but there's a lot more to fasting than you think in types of fast. Thanks guys, we'll see you next week.